Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Anybody got a praise in their heart? Any got a praise on their lips? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I just spent time praising him today. Spent time magnifying the Lord today. Hallelujah. I didn't say everything was all right. I didn't say everything was fine, but I said I spent time with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I guess y'all can't breathe out there, huh? <laughs> Amen. Y'all can be seated. God is so good. Oh, I love what I'm feeling in here today. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Elder Brown said that he's uh, all around me. He's in front of me. He's behind me, on the left of me, on the right of me. The old song said he's all over me and he's keeping me alive. But there's one portion that song forgets is that he's also in me. The living God is in me. Oh, man, hallelujah. My, 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 my. God is so good. Man, I, I just feel like praising. I don't think y'all ready to go there with me tonight, so praise God. Amen, Jesus. Amen. God is so awesome. He is so awesome. Amen. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Yala no 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 Jesus, have your way tonight, God. Be magnified tonight, Jesus. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are in control, Lord God. And I magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I know you might be ready to move on, but I just feel like parking right here for a second. Come on, somebody just lift your hands to the Lord right now. And just begin to minister to him right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, just begin to magnify him right now. Lift him up, lift your voice, and begin to praise the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are worthy, O oh God. There is nobody like you in all the earth, Lord Jesus. You are holy, you are righteous, you are mighty, God. And I worship you, I magnify you, I praise your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Terry, right where you at, can you lift your hands? I just got a burden for you today, and it was just so strong. Come on, church, can you point your hands to this man of God right here? In the name of Jesus, I don't know what you need. I don't know what's going on, but God is right there in the midst of it. He's right there right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We lose grace and we lose strength right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we lose the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ to come upon this man in Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord God, right where he is right now, Lord God, touch him, Lord God. Minister to his need tonight, God. Lord God, move in his spirit, man, tonight, God. Give him what he needs, oh God, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Woo, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. My, 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 hallelujah, Jesus. Is it all right if we wait on the Lord just a second here? Oh, God, have your way tonight, Jesus. Have your way tonight, God. We are your people, Lord God. 
We look to you tonight, God. We look to you tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we look to you tonight, God. Have your way tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the word of the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I came here tonight expecting God to do something mighty. I came expecting God to minister to me tonight. I came expecting God to minister to you tonight. If we just have our hearts open to the word of the Lord tonight. In Jesus' name. The word of the Lord reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to read it one more time. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And the word of God says his mercy endures forever. Not only does his mercy endures forever, but his love and his plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has a plan for us. I said, God Almighty has a plan for us. The scripture said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. How many know that God thinks about us? How many are glad that the thoughts of the Lord are toward you continually? You're in the mind and the heart of God always. There's not a moment, there's not a second that he doesn't know right where you are. Right in your situation, no matter what you're facing, no matter what's going on, God is there, he's present, and he has a plan. Hallelujah. I'm going to read something here, the definition of the word to know. That is to concretely or abstractly, intentionally plan, whether bad or plot or good or advised. Cunning work, curious device, imagination, invented means, purpose, and thought. To think, it means to literally weave or generally to fabricate. I'm going to read that again. God's thoughts, when he thinks of you, he's generally and, and, and literally weaving together a plan for you. He's literally weaving together a plan for you. Hallelujah. It says to plot um, or to use mental effort to regard or to compute. Now, when we hear the word plot, you might think like, God, plotting against me? <laughs> right? Amen. It's not, the, the Bible says that all, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, and all that good stuff. Even if it seems like it's an evil thing, it's a good thing. God's plans are towards us. As a matter of fact, the word that he gave, uh, the man that he gave this word to was Jeremiah. And he told Jeremiah that I knew you before you were in your mother's belly. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. That means he was already putting together and connecting the dots for you. He already had a plan for you before you were even here. The plan of the Lord. How many want to walk and be in the plan of the Lord? How many want that uh, uh, plan in our lives? We want those good benefits that come with the plan. See, at this point in this time of year, people are getting ready for the new year, and they have all types of plans working. Financial plans. They have workout plans. Come on, somebody. 
I know a couple in here right now have some workout plans. Y'all better keep them all the way through. Hey, Amen. You got some workout plans. But see, the thing is that those plans fail sometimes. You even have a nutrition plan. Hey, Amen. And, and you don't want no nasty food. You know, I, wanted, I told my wife I wanted a nutritionist. But then I got to thinking about it. I said, they probably tried to give me just lettuce and little, little tomato balls. And, and I don't want that. I don't want that. And so um, I said, I'm going to do what Bishop did and just use the grace of God and go ahead and my merry way. <laughs> Amen. But God has a plan for us. And it has an expected end. And within that plan, it has peace. Why does it have peace? Because there's going to be some troubling times in the plan of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. When we hear that, we say the plan of God, I want the plan of God. And, and a lot of times we may think that it's just going to be a smooth road. But the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He, because he leads me beside the still waters. Because he restores my soul. But there's also a valley attached to that. There's also a, a, a valley with dead man's bones all around you. The valley of the shadow of death. That kind of valley is a valley that other people have been through but didn't make it. Other people have faced what you faced but didn't come out on the other side. Other people have walked through this valley and darkness surrounds them, but they have not known the name to call on. They weren't confident because they went by their own plan. They didn't make it because they walked by their plans. But see, Jesus has a plan for each and every one of us that is a sure plan. And no matter if I do die, it's still a plan to see me on the other side. I'm victorious no matter what. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? No matter what I go through, I have the opportunity to have peace in the midst of it. Why? Because God knows, and he has a plan. In the midst of this pandemic, people may question God. I hear some people question God. How is there a God? Well, huh, he's already calculated and computed, and he has a plan. Because I don't know about you in this pandemic, but I've drawn closer to God. He's given me more reason, if I didn't have any reason already, to call on his name. To magnify him. Amen. The Lord's thoughts are above my thoughts. His ways are above my ways. I can't always figure him out. I try to sometimes. Don't, oh, don't leave me out here like that. Let me rephrase that. You try to sometimes. Amen. You try to figure the Lord out and you think you got him down packed. And as soon as you think you got it calculated, here comes a curve. Here comes a curve ball when you thought it was a fastball and it was a home run knockout of the park. He switched it up and put a slider in there, a breaking ball. And it was something that you didn't calculate. But the beautiful thing is this. God is not an event planner that is caught by surprise. You ever been to an event uh, and, and the plans didn't go as planned? An event planner, I know at our wedding, we try to plan for every little thing. And I was determined that we're going to start on time. Now, I'm not doing that kind of wedding that says start at 3 and you start at 5 and 6 o'clock. Well, guess what happened? We started at 5 o'clock when we were supposed to start at 3 o'clock. And I was some kind of mad because there was an uncalculated hiccup that occurred. And you know what they waited for? They went back to the hotel to get the CD. A CD that had music on it. I'm not worried about that music. Just bring my bride down this aisle. I played, I played the keyboard at our wedding. Man, I was so nervous. I wrote her a little song, and I couldn't see her, so I'm wondering, like, is she liking it? What's going on here, you know? But we had a plan to start on time. There's other events that happens, and, 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 and people, uh, we got a, a, a planner here, a decorator, and what, what all you do? You do all that, right? Amen. There's no um, event that takes God by surprise. 
If it was man, if, if it was a man just saying this, I wouldn't be confident that God has me. I wouldn't be confident in the plan of God. I would be a nervous wreck. But the fact is that nothing catches him by surprise. Nothing gets by him. Nothing slides around him. It can't because he's everywhere. He's everywhere at one time. And although he's everywhere, he's right there with you. His eyes are on you. His thoughts are toward you. Continually. Continually. In the name of Jesus. He's computing. He's calculating. He's watching. And so I, I go through that, that valley, and he brings me through that valley, and it, it's not good things there. I get a little spanking in the valley. Get a little whooping in the valley. See, I know this. That every plan of God has appointments. I said every plan of God has appointments. There's an appointed time. There's a time where he executes his plan in a certain way. No matter how much we want to rush him, Lord, hurry up and get me out of this. Lord, hurry up and move me to the next thing. Hurry up and get the next deal. Come on, do a new thing, God. We always ask, God, do a new thing. And I am trying to do a new thing, the Lord says. I'm trying to do it in you. And so that's why I'm not moving you uh, ahead or graduating you yet because there's still some more lessons that you have to learn. There's still some things that I have to get out of you before I move you forward. And so when we don't know what God is doing, there is a resistance that comes to the plan of God. I was, I was just reading uh, this week in John uh, 13, and I was reading about the apostles getting washed. And everybody went on with Jesus, and you know that knucklehead Peter. Peter had some resistance in him. That's something about Peter. He always just, you know, you need a Peter, though. Come on now, somebody. You need a Peter around. Somebody. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 this is what Peter did. He said, Lord, you're not washing me. You're not, you, no, God, you're not washing me. He was trying to be humble in his own mind and his own thinking. But at the same time, he was resisting. He wasn't being humble. He was actually resisting. Why? Because the Bible said, Jesus said, you don't know what I'm doing, and that's why you don't want me to do it. Sometimes we don't know the calculations that God has for us, and we resist it because we don't know exactly what he's doing. But once Peter got the revelation that if you don't let me uh, do what I came to do in your life, that you're none of mine, what was Peter's response? It changed. Peter had a whole three, uh, a 180. He said, wait, Lord, hold up. Now, before I didn't want you to wash nothing, but now don't miss anything. Get all of it. You can have, what the song said, you can have all of me. Wash it all, Lord Jesus. Wash it all. Sometimes we struggle with the how. It isn't the, the resistance of, of pride and, and, and not uh, uh, trying to calculate what God does, but it's the how. How? How can these things be, Lord? How can this get done? Here's Zechariah, and he's in the temple doing his temple maintenance. He's, 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 he's doing the works of the Lord. And the Bible records that him and his wife, they did the will and the law of God always. They did everything they could to please God. But they were stricken in age. They were old. And the angel of the Lord shows up to him when he's in the middle of doing his temple duty. See, when you go about doing the work of the Lord, do you have an expectation for something to happen? Or do you go and do the same routine and do the same thing? See, he didn't have to be led by the Spirit to do the things of the law because it was a routine. But God had a plan. He had a plan to prepare the way for the Lord. He had a plan to change some things up. There was a, a, a curveball that nobody expected. There was something that was about to happen in the earth that was about to change everything. There was a Messiah coming to be birthed out. And Zechariah was going about doing the temple maintenance, and he was in the presence of the Lord, 
and all of a sudden something happened. The angel Gabriel shows up. And Gabriel begins to talk to him and give them the message that God gave him. The well, thing that, that got me is Gabriel said, I, the Lord has heard your prayers. Him and his wife had been praying. I guess they've been praying for a long time because the Bible said they were old. We, we can't calculate and compute in our minds exactly when God is going to move. Exactly when God is going to execute the timing, the appointment of the appointed time. There's a time that God executes all his plan. And so Zachariah is in the temple doing work. And, and Gabriel shows up and he says, you're going to have a child and you're going to have it at this appointed time. Zachariah doesn't jump for joy. He does not leap and say, thank you, Jesus. I've been waiting on this. This is my expectation. This is my desire. God, I've been, I've been looking to this, this day, this moment, this hour. He was caught off guard. Or was he caught off guard? Where are you at right now as God has given you a promise in your promise? Are you going about everyday life just to look for the same old thing to happen? When you come into this building, the same old thing to happen. When you go out there in the world, the same old thing to happen. Or are you looking for the expectation, looking with expectation? You got to have a bolo in your spirit. Come on, care group. Amen. Be on the lookout. In law enforcement, there's a saying that's called bolo. It meant, oh, where's I at? He know what I'm talking about. I don't have my glasses on. But every saint of God needs to have a bolo in their spirit. A be on the lookout. Every single day. Why? Because God is ready to do something every single day. Guess what? Even do Christmas. I told Elder Brown, I was talking to Elder Brown, and I caught myself. I said, well, you know, I'm already planning for next year. Man, it's the holidays. And as soon as it left my mouth, I said, that's in here? That's my faith? That's where I'm at? So I'm going to skip the next however many days and just go ahead and look for the next year and skip over as if God can't do something right now as if he doesn't have a plan for the next couple days because it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. God has a plan. He has a plan for each and every day. So Zacharias is in the temple, and he's doing the work of the Lord, and Gabriel talks to him, and he said, how can these things be so? How is it going to work out? A child... Me? Man, you know how old I am? My body is stricken with age. There's certain things that I can't even do anymore. But God. But God. Here's the problem. Gabriel said it's going to happen. Even beyond what you think. It's going to happen because I've got a word of the Lord. That's why it's going to happen. And you just so happen to be a part of the plan to participate. And so he shut his mouth. What was the problem? Gabriel was, I could see Gabriel being offended. Man, do you hear what I just said? He asked him, do you know who I am? Look at me, what I, he said, do you know who I am? I stand in the presence of the Lord. I'm coming from God because your prayers have been sent up all these years and now it's the appointed time. And you have no expectation. What was the problem? The problem was he was, uh, he was in covenant with God. They were walking with the Lord. The Bible records. The Bible don't lie, right? Okay, amen. The Bible records that they were pleasing God. And they were doing what they were supposed to do. He was even in the temple doing the work. But the angel shut his mouth because he doubted. And he asked how. There's an appointed time in the plan, 
and there's an appointed place. See, the time came, but the time manifests itself in a particular place. This preparer of the way of the Lord was going to be in a place. This Messiah was going to be born in a certain place. Zechariah, it was calculated at the exact moment that he went and do, do his duty. He was going to be met by Gabriel. This is the appointed time. This is the appointed place. And he doubted. And so they sh the, uh, the angel of the Lord shut his mouth up. Couldn't speak for the duration of the, uh, uh, of the expectancy of the pregnancy. He couldn't speak for the, the duration of the expectation. He couldn't, oh my Lord, wow. He could not speak for the duration of the expected way. Because you're not putting that doubt into my plan. You're going to shut your mouth now because this is going to happen. I could have took your life, but I just took your voice. Mm, 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 mm. And so he goes on home, and the people have been wondering, what is taking him so long? This is out of the ordinary because something was about to happen that was out of the ordinary, and they perceived that he had an encounter with God. Watch this. On the contrary... The same angel, Gabriel, visits Mary. He goes and visits Mary and he tells her, blessed and highly favored of all women, you're about to have a baby. Man, it's baby dropping season. <laughs> Just don't come here, Gabriel, tell me I'm about to have no baby. <laughs> Go to Pastor Susan. <laughs> Amen. Go to somebody else. Don't come over here. Elder, any takers? No? Elder said I got four. I'm, I'm three. Oh. <laughs> hey, man, that wasn't no purpose. Lord have mercy. Woo! Jesus' name. He goes and visits Mary. He comes to this young girl and he says, you're about to have a baby. You're about to have a baby. Mary asks the same question. How can these things be so? Gabriel didn't get mad with Mary. How is it that two people asked the same question and it wasn't the same response? See, Mary, this is the thing. Gabriel had all the tools and everything in place. He was in covenant. He was pleasing God. It was at the appointed time. It was the appointed place. He had a wife. The only thing that was impossible was for the for God to, oh, the only thing was impossible was what he couldn't do, he tried to do. But it was up to God to open the womb. Oh, man. Go look what it said what John would bring to the people. But here's Mary standing before the same angel with the same expectancy from the angel to give her a word. He gives her a word and says, you're about to have a baby. You're blessed and highly, highly favored. Now Mary shuddered at the salutation, this, this greeting. Brother, what are you talking about? She don't want to look. He said, fear not. She said, well, I got a question. How can these things be so? Realize the difference. Mary didn't have a spouse. Mary didn't have someone she was in covenant with except God. And her problem was, how can I do these things? It's going to put me out of sight of the covenant with you. I can't birth out nothing in this place. How can I, I what did she say? I know of not a man. 
Unless you know something I don't know, I've never encountered nobody. Now, I'm a spouse to somebody, hallelujah. But uh, no, I ain't getting stoned. We haven't done anything. That was her response. And Gabriel didn't shun at that. He said, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. He's going to overshadow you and the power of the highest is going to come upon you and you're going to birth out what all the earth has waited for. All of Israel and every woman in Israel has desired to be. The moment is here. The timing is here. The place is here. The appointment is for you, Mary. And she said, well, be it unto me. Do you feel that way about the plan of God in your life? Is there anything you feel like God can't do in your life? Is there any promise before you that you feel like God can't bring to pass? Do you feel like because of your condition right now that the word that the Lord gave you cannot be fulfilled? How can these things be so? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. God is trying to do something in this people. Each and every one of you. There's a plan that God has laid out. You see, this is the thing. When God has a plan, it's calculated. Everywhere you look where God was, he has a tabernacle plan, right? And it was laid out exactly what it was supposed to be, the dimensions of it. The length, uh, uh, the, the width, the height, the depth. The placement of it. He has a plan of salvation in every dispensation, and it is particular. There is only one way of salvation in this uh, 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 particular, uh, uh, what do you call it, dispensation. Every dispensation, it was particular. The ark, when he drew up those plans and gave them to Noah, they were particular. And Noah had to follow those things to a T. The temple, the plans were particular, Katrina. Those plans were particular. Do you know that you are now the temple of the Holy Ghost? You are the temple. And God has laid out a temple plan for each and every temple and tabernacle of God. Every single one of us. There's no big I's and no little U's in this place. There's an appointed time, appointed place, and with every appointed time and appointed place and the promises of God, there's also an appointed enemy. Every single one of us have an appointed enemy. As you make your way through the plan, you have an enemy that's going to show up. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your spouse ain't your enemy. I'm not talking about your spouse. Your children, because they're driving you crazy because they're on Zoom all day, they're not your enemy. Those holiday pounds aren't your enemy, hallelujah. But the Bible records that our enemy is that one of the spirit, principalities and powers. That's why we get together and pray, because there's a plan. And there's also an enemy. I expect, I, I, I've been trying to do it, and I, I'm, I've been trying to join more prayers outside of my assigned prayer on Friday nights. Why? Because I recognize that there's an enemy. But he can't stop the plan. That's why we had called the war, because there is an enemy. But there is a plan. Oh, hallelujah. There is an enemy. And he has an appointment. Pastor's been going into that um, with some great teaching and revelation. But there's an enemy. And it's the enemy of your soul. To fight your mind that God isn't for you. God doesn't think about you. God doesn't. He, you don't belong in this plan. Where do you fit at? What's your place in this plan? 
Did anybody see the suit I was wearing when I first came in? Yeah, uh-huh. I was looking crazy, wasn't I? I put on a suit that was just too big. I put on a suit that wasn't made for me. I wasn't trying to be that modest. There was a suit that was too big and it wasn't created for me. It wasn't a part of the plan. See, what God has for you is telling me. And when I tried to wear somebody else's plan, I end up falling, tripping. I can't run right because I got to hold my pants up. And now I'm restricted. Now I'm held up. Stop looking at everybody else in their suit and start thanking God for what you have. Stop looking at everybody else and how they operate. How they move. It's time for you to step forward. There's a portion of you that you've never seen before. There was a whole nother me under that suit. I even had it where I tied the tie short on purpose because in that suit that I was trying to wear, my shortcomings were seen. But when I put on the clothing and the armor of God that is for me, it's covered. God comes to cover you. That's why he clothes you. That's why he covers you. In the beginning there, when we read Jeremiah 29, 11, the verse before it, God begins to talk to Jeremiah and tell him to tell his people. Well, he's, he, he told him that to tell the people when he sent the letter off, don't believe those lying prophets. Don't believe them. They're telling you lies. Everything is, is just right. Everything is all right. Everything is good. What do I mean? The Bible says that they were carried away. That word carried away means uncovered. They were uncovered in their captivity. But when God draws you out of captivity, he covers you. And then it is all good. And then everything is all right. And then you can grab a hold of that peace. There is an expected plan to be fulfilled in your life. I'm looking so forward to some of the people of God in this room stepping out and putting on the robe that God has for them. Putting on the outfit that God has for them. Wearing the calling. But you know what I had to do to get to this suit? I had to put off. There's some things that you have to put off that are your enemies. And there's enemies that God is going to help you defeat in your life. But then there's some things that you have to make a decision that you're going to allow him to take away from you. It said you have to put off. God puts on. But you have to put off. I can still function in that suit a little bit. I can still see. And see, the thing is, when we walk around, we think that we look all right. That suit was, that man, that suit, I wish I could fit that suit. There was a day where I almost could fit that suit. But see, to fit that suit, I would have to put on weights that weren't a part of God's plan. We start putting on things to fit into things because me, myself, I can't fit into that suit. I can't fit into that garment. And you yourself, you can't fit into that person's calling. 
You can't fit into what God has called them to do. He said, he told Jeremiah, I called you from the womb. Paul said the same thing out of my mother's womb. David said, in my mother's belly, you knew me. All throughout the Bible, there's people proclaiming how God knew them in the belly. So guess what that means? Each and every one of you, he knew and had a plan for. I know the thoughts. Even when you don't know, he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Stop consulting your own thoughts and begin to think, uh, 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 grab a hold of what God thinks about you. Because our thoughts expose uh, all the negative. We are so critical of ourselves. Then Jeremiah said, how can I do this? I'm but a child. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Don't fear them. I've called you to speak to nations. I called you to speak to kingdoms and kings. I called you to tear some things down. Oh, hallelujah. Do you realize that this church is about to look so different with the same people? Because there's some people that's about to step out of those old clothes that keep trying to hold on to. And they're about to step into something new. Them old wineskins are about to get cast off. God has been waiting to put something in you and put something on you. But the weight of it, he couldn't dare put it on you because it would kill you. But once you decide to put it off, he says, oh, I got something for you. Come try this on. There's appointed times, appointed places, appointed enemies. And with those appointed enemies comes appointed victories. John had enemies, those Pharisees and those Sadducees, because they were sad, you see. I always wanted to say that. Praise God. <laughs> Opportunity. Because they didn't believe in the resurrection plan. They wanted to keep a hold of the old plan. But when Jesus fulfilled it all, do you understand that that plan, you ever had some plans that you just ripped up? Some plans that you just tore up? Do you understand that the veil was torn? And that old plan was ripped up, and we were able to walk into the new. What does that mean? Now everybody can go into the temple. Everybody can have a chance to dwell in the presence of God anywhere at any time. We're called out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm closing, Zach. I... Appointed times, appointed places, appointed enemies, appointed victories. But through all those appointments, there's the God that knows and the God that thinks and his thoughts are toward you, computed, calculated, measured, detailed. Every nook and cranny, everything you don't like about yourself, God loves about you. Sometimes we have so much self-hate because of our thoughts. Beating ourselves up all day. I lived like that for a long time. But I decided, I'm going to think about what God thinks about me. Lord, where's that expecting? This is not my end. Somebody needs to proclaim that tonight, that this is not my end. The enemies that I'm facing now are not going to overtake me. They're not going to kill me. They're not going to take me out. I'm not going to die here. This valley of the shadow of death, I'm not dying here. I'm not going to die here in this wilderness. Hallelujah. See, the wilderness is about worship. It's about sacrifice. 
and I'm not going to die here, but I'm going to come out of this wilderness in the fullness of the Holy Ghost, power, and the Spirit. Anybody ready to go there with the Lord? Come on, can you stand to your feet? There's more. There's more in his plan. There's more in his plan. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, somebody's catching that right now. I can feel that. Somebody's catching that right now. Somebody's catching that right now, that God is not done with you. The plan is not over. It's not over. It's time to put off and time to let God put on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, right now is an opportunity. It's an opportunity right now before you. I'm not going to hype anything. I'm not going to say anything. It's just an opportunity between you and God. The God that sees you, the God that knows, the God that thinks toward you and expect it in. And it is of peace and it's good. It's good. It's time to step out, Antioch. It's time to step out and time to step in. It's time to put off so that God can put on. The Lord is my shepherd. You've gone crawling, but now it's time to walk. He Some of you have walked, me. and now it's time to run. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, but now that I'm a man, I, I put away childish things. I won't fear. It's time to put away. I'm filled with anointing. In the name of Jesus. It's time to put on. My cup's overflowing. I know when shouting, but I preached. No weapon can harm. I know it wasn't thunder in the room, but I, I tried to give you what God gave me. I will Will you receive it? Can you see the plan in your life? Even in your shortcomings, God is covering you. Hallelujah. It's time to walk in it. It's time to move forward. It's time to forgive. It's time to forgive yourself. It's time to forgive God. It's time to let go. He's my that you can go forward. Always holds me close. Come on, right now, somebody needs to let it go. Let your past go. Stop letting that hinder you from going forward in Jesus. It's the appointed time. It's the appointed place. Although there be enemies, there's victories with those enemies. No You're about to see something in God that you've never seen before. Just as David came to the battlefield, I he faced a giant in a situation that he's never faced before. But he couldn't wear the armor of the king. Hallelujah. He had to use what was proven and allow the Lord to lead and guide him. It's calculated. In Jesus' name. He's my In Jesus comfort. Always holds me close. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, let it be so. Lord, Father, I pray that eyes are open to see, Lord God. So I will Ears to hear, Lord God, this moment, this hour. Lord, spirit lives that you are offering another opportunity, Lord God. To come out victorious and on the other your side. In the name of Jesus Christ. Me, so I have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Jesus. Your spirit is within me. My victory. My victory. Come on, your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory. My victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your
Dismissed.